Okay, Dave, you want to start then? It's 10 o'clock? Yeah, let's get started. Okay, well, I want to thank all of you for coming to the Marketing Your Business, Your Roadmap to Success webinar. Uh, myself and David Saxby are going to give you some great information. Once again, take out your pads of paper and pens and take down lots of notes. Uh, we're going to leave questions till the middle and also the very, very end. And let's get started here. Uh, we're going to take the fear out of online marketing. Uh, we know many of you have hesitated to jump onto online marketing and LinkedIn, especially because you're thinking it's too complicated, it'll be too costly, I don't want to pay for another thing I don't use, and you don't have anybody to help you if you have questions. And I find that's the, uh, the number one thing, you know, when I do any kind of workshop or buy a program, it's, you know, there's so many small things you have to ask people. So today, we're hopefully going to answer some questions for you as well as want to give you a great information and give you something great at the very, very end. Our webinar is going to go like this. I'm going to tell you why we're qualified to teach you today. 73 minutes of pure content, five minutes of how we can help you, and then we'll be happy to answer once again any questions. We'll have two uh, different sections in the webinar to answer your questions. So make sure you, you write down your questions and ask them in the middle and the end. Uh, so why us? Um, my co-host, David Saxby, has in the sales and marketing industry for over 40 years. He's a professional speaker, and David speaks to audiences of entrepreneurs, CEOs, professionals, and a wide range of industries. He is very, very knowledgeable on email marketing and other marketing strategies, as well as he's going to show you some, some phenomenal software he has today that will really be able to analyze everything you're doing in your business and give you some great insights into what you're not doing and what you should be doing. And uh, Alan uh, is my co-host this morning as well. He's been, uh, um, in 25 years, he's been in the digital marketing and website design field. And 13 years of that, he's been a LinkedIn trainer. So pretty well at the beginning of LinkedIn. And nine years as a LinkedIn lead generation expert in the industry. And he's gonna pass that information on to you today and uh, onto uh, his clients that he works with. So you can learn how to leverage LinkedIn's amazing and robust uh, database because it's got a great opportunity to be able to capture information of all of the people available on LinkedIn. So we're gonna start out, first of all, I wanna talk about um, a coaching aspect that we take uh, in, in the business. And that is just simply looking at five different profit areas within your business. And uh, so we, we look at the foundation of your business and that is do you have the right strategy, the right product, the right service. Um, we look at leads and where you generate your leads from. We looked at the conversion ratios from your leads. We look at where those leads wind up becoming transactions, in other words, paying clients. And we look at where you get profit from. And Alan had mentioned a software program that we use to um, analyze this information. And the, I'll show you uh, uh, a little bit about that later on in the presentation. But one of the things that's uh, great about it is we're able to take a look at where you're at now and doing several steps in your marketing and changing some things in your marketing can increase your revenue quite substantially. Do you wanna move it to the next one, Alan? There we go. Uh, so the first area is, is looking really at the, the foundational part of your business. And that really is, um, do you have the right systems and, and processes in place? Are you going after the right target market? Um, do you have trust? And do you educate your clients such that they believe that you're the only uh, supplier for them? And most important above all is the strategy aspect. And so when I talk about strategy, um, give you an example, think of three businesses in the same industry side by side on the same street. And during this time, many businesses have done things like uh, discounts and offers such that they attract clients in the door. So uh, three businesses side by side, one business to the end of the street decides to do a 30% off sale. So the owner of the business at the other end of the street puts up a sign and offers 50% off. The owner in the middle of the street's kind of perplexed, doesn't know what to do, and decides to uh, come up with a strategic approach to promoting their business and puts a sign out that says, main entrance here. That's strategy. 
But to give you a more realistic example of that, uh, with Hyundai, being in the automotive industry, as you can well imagine, is extremely competitive. And so during the last recession, people stopped buying cars. They did a survey of their market and tried to determine, you know, what would they be able to offer? What could they do that would help people buy cars from them? And one of the things they did was they put a, uh, a guarantee that if the person that bought the car lost their job, they would be refunded their money. There's no contract um, that uh, perpetuates itself and they wouldn't be charged any fees to do that. So uh, that's pretty uh, straightforward strategy and very strong strategy to compete in the automotive industry. Not many uh, other automotive dealers did that. So let's talk about um, more profits. And so coming from the perspective of having the right business strategy, if you have products and services, are you offering products and services in the market that the customers see as different from what the competitors offer? And who is your target market? Who's your primary target market? Because that's critical in deciding how you communicate with them, which is part of the whole marketing process. And you need the right marketing strategy, marketing and sales strategy. So it starts with your brand. Does your brand stand out in the market? Does it differentiate you in the market? Or does it look like everybody else's brand and it's, it doesn't stand out distinctively? Is your message distinctive? Does it have an offer that'll attract the customers in a unique way? And are you using the right media? You know, social media is out there. Many people jumped on social media not realizing that perhaps they're not using the right one or they're going after the wrong social media to attract their customers. And what about timing? Are you in the market at the time that your customers are thinking about buying? So some of the lead generation mistakes that people make, first of all, is that we need to be strategic, not tactical. And part of the challenge around that is that most businesses go the other way around. They try a tactical approach. They place ads, they send out mailers, they network, they go to trade shows, they do prospecting and so on without realizing what their actual process should be from a strategic point of view. And it's more important to have the right message and how you say that message than it is to necessarily have exactly the right media. If you can distribute your message across many media in the right way with the right offers and so on, you're going to attract the right customers. And generally what happens is business owners uh, blame the media, blame the, the marketing medium that they're using because they've done a tactical approach rather than looking at it from a strategic point of view, and making their message stick. So uh, the other thing that happens too is many businesses offer platitudes. You know, we have the lowest prices, the best service, we're family owned and operated, we offer convenient hours, we offer the best value, and we've been in business since 1431 BC. The fact is the customer really doesn't care. You're old, what David. What looking for is what it does for them. So when we're generating leads, there's a number of different approaches we can take. One is we can use a referral system and work with other businesses to promote us. We can create joint ventures and alliances with other businesses like Alan and I are doing here. We're doing a joint venture to offer our services combined. We can use publicity and promotion to convince people uh, by a third party endorsement. We can use direct marketing and direct marketing still works. Over 63% of direct mail still gets opened believe it or not, if it's self-addressed. Uh, we can use advertising and there's many different channels of advertising we can look at and we can use digital marketing, but the key in digital marketing is to select the right digital marketing processes and systems. And there's many other approaches we can take to generate leads. Here's the problem in the digital space though. If you look at what's available, it's hard for a business owner to really decipher all this and determine what's going to be the best approach. And generally what happens is people pick one or two media 
and really don't do the homework to find out where exactly their customers are interacting and what customers are looking for. So when you're doing an analysis, you need to look back on the digital marketing space and determine what's the most likely channels that your customers are going to communicate through. So LinkedIn is a good one for business to business. It's a great channel for business to business. Facebook is better for business to consumer. So we also have to look at converting those leads. So we get leads in the door, what do we do with them? Um, if you don't have a, a customer relationship management system, a CRM system, then it's important to implement one so you can manage your contacts and keep in touch with them. One of the ways of doing that is to make sure you have a compelling offer that engages people. Secondly, create scripts for the people that are in your sales team and, and people within your organization so that they have a set idea of what they represent on behalf of the company. Many people just wing it. When the phone rings, they pick up the phone and just answer it and wing the process. So um, also, uh, what do we do to uh, help close the sales? So where do we take people through in the process? Because sometimes we're going to run into a situation where people aren't quite ready to buy now. And how do we follow up once we get those leads? Uh, one of the ways to do that is we can create a drip campaign in, in the email system. So what that simply means is it's an automated process to stay in touch with your customers so that they're getting useful and helpful information, not a sales pitch, useful and helpful information that engages them and keeps them in your radar for when the time it comes that they're going to buy. So then we need to look at how do we take those leads once we've converted them and turn them into more transactions. So we have a database of customers we've worked with and uh, oftentimes we get busy with new leads and forget that many of our current customers are probably in the role of being able to buy again from us. So do we have a sales team? And if we have a sales team, are they working together and helping share leads? Are they managing the lead system? And do they have the right content that they offer to the customers? And are they engaging customers through an ongoing campaign? Um, how are we setting our appointments? Are they automated? Do we use a calendar system? Or are we doing it all manually? And do we have additional products and services we can offer? So in many businesses, we may not have um, a full portfolio of products that customers may want. So a joint venture helps in being able to share other products and services from other businesses and perhaps bring in more revenue to our business? And can we increase the frequency of purchase? So uh, software companies have got this nailed. They, they have a monthly purchase system. So you're on their radar forever because you're continuing to buy from them on a regular basis. And many of you probably have seen this where you purchase at a base level with the software and they upsell you to the next level. So do we have an ability to be able to upsell our customers to the next level of whatever we offer? And if customers don't have the money to be able to buy uh, the full package that we're offering or the most expensive products we have, do we have an ability to be able to downsell? Do we have something we can offer that doesn't cost us more money, but offers more value for that customer, even though they're paying a lower price? And how many have gone back and talked to past customers? I know this past year when COVID hit, I did that. I called a lot of customers that I've worked with before, particularly in the speaking business, and uh, wound up engaging them again for something this year, even though 2020 hit. So what about more profits? Well, one of the things we could look at is cut costs. I don't know about you, and but Alan and I am sure of spending a small fortune on software programs and many times we can find a, a software program that does multiple tasks for less than the price of the entire software suites that we were using before. Can we bundle things together? So by bundling products and services together, the value perception in the mind of the customer means that they're going to look at what we offer as more value for the same price than what the competition's offering. So what can we bundle together that makes sense for our customers to buy from us? Can we cross sell and can we upsell? So I've talked about upselling. Cross selling is simply, um, a simple example is if you're selling one thing, what naturally goes with that other thing? So think about if you're doing a home reservation and your home renovation and you're doing painting. 
you go into a, a Home Depot and you look at the painting supplies and if the clerk is helping you, they may suggest that you need some paint and you need some uh, brushes and you need some um, masking and all that sort of thing. So it's, it's bundling it together and upselling it uh, to customers or cross-selling it to customers. Can we increase the longevity of, of our buying relationships as well? So sometimes we sell a set package, maybe it's a consulting package or a particular product. What can we do to continue to add value for the customer on an ongoing basis? So think about car dealerships. Some of the high-end car dealerships offer long-term warranties. They offer upgrade packages for your vehicle. Um, they offer a, a service package that includes detailing, uh, maybe delivery of your car when it's finished in service and so on. And what can we do to increase price? Fear with most businesses, particularly during COVID time, is that if we increase our price, we're gonna lose customers. But that's not necessarily so. In many cases, increasing price will increase revenue without losing customers. And uh, simply because once they built a relationship, most customers don't wanna leave a business to deal with an unknown. So the key to any successful marketing for any business, and it doesn't matter what business you're in, is creating what we call a market dominating position. I'm gonna share with you some ideas on how you can do that. We need to be unique and stand out. And uh, one of the formulas that we deal with when we're reviewing information for marketing our business is what we call a conversion equation. And I'm gonna show you an example of that. Uh, is our offer compelling? And is it informational oriented, not sales oriented? Not pitching your products and services, but offering information that's useful and helpful to the customer to help make a decision. And are we using a strategic approach to our marketing? Or are we relying on tactical approaches and doing it on kind of a helter-skelter basis? Ask yourself, do you have a marketing plan in place and strategy? And do you have a budget set for doing your marketing? So when I'm working with clients, particularly on a coaching basis, we have eight different strategies we use to uh, address that five-step profit formula that I showed you earlier. And it works for 95% of the businesses we work with. So these eight areas are simply making your advertising work, um, being able to build your business by using joint ventures, looking at cross-selling and upselling to make uh, increased revenue uh, opportunities, um, expanding your products and services to offer to the customers, um, downselling and being able to sell to more customers, uh, creating a revenue producing drip campaign. So many, many businesses now are looking at continuing contact with customers. And um, one of the surveys that I, I saw recently in the business world is that it's taking as long as 18 months now to close larger contracts, particularly in the service world. So how do we stop discounting and uh, start offering additional value? And how do we cut unnecessary costs? So here's the conversion formula. First of all, we need to interrupt what's going on in the head of the customer. One of the things that um, is, is going on in the marketing world now is, is called uh, neuromarketing, and that is understanding the brain science and how people make decisions around buying. And so that whole world of, of marketing has changed. And literally there's experiments where people are showing different advertising campaigns, different marketing messages and so on. And that information is being analyzed by watching the brain patterns. So it's quite a fascinating science. The second part is engage your audience. And that is by creating a subheadline that addresses the uh, solution. So the interrupt is addressing a problem. The engage is offering a potential solution for a customer. Then educate. So the challenge nowadays is most customers spend a great deal of time going on the internet and looking up everything about our business, all the competitors and so on. So we need to spend time educating our customers that we're the right choice for them. And the last part is the offer. And the offer has to be so compelling and irresistible that the customer would only work or deal with us. So here's a good example of interrupting people's uh, thinking. 
Um, think about COVID time. Well, when would it be a better time to get braces if you're looking at having some dental uh, alignment? So best time to get braces is now. So if we look at the offer, a lot of businesses do an incentive offer, which can be useful, but the challenge with a, a, an incentive offer is it oftentimes reduces our revenue. So an incentive offer could be something like buy one, get one, or a percentage discount, or a gift with purchase, or a free service, like an assessment or an estimate and so on. The disadvantages, one is they're sacrificing price. Two, it's easy to comparison shop, because if you're, competition's offering a better discount, then the customer will go there. And, and here's the real key is that there's about one to 3% of people who are ready to buy now. So the challenge with the incentive offers, it trains customers to only respond to offers and, and discounts, incentives. Uh, the other challenge is, and this is typically uh, a problem with uh, professionals, is that all of their websites are the same and all of them have the same information and usually the offer is call us or book an appointment or give us your contact information so that's not special it's not different it's not unique you look at chiropractors and other um, doctors and and um, medical professionals it's the same thing they put their phone number book an appointment and so on so it doesn't help them stand out so here's a better way to approach things. One is to offer information that's valuable. So think about a mortgage broker. If they offered uh, a booklet that said eight different mistakes or eight of the biggest mistakes that people make, that might help people make a decision as to who's better to deal with. Look at this sunroom company. It's an idea guide. So if people are thinking of adding a sunroom onto their home, what could they offer that would be different and unique and give them something of value, but an idea guide where they can determine what might be the best sunroom for their house. Or how about a financial planner that has an assessment program so that people can look at their financial picture and they'll have a better idea of what it is they need help with or where their investments are maybe not making money for them and there's a potential for more money. Uh, how about a home remodeling organization or business. One of the challenges with home remodeling is that most of the time con people hire contractors, they don't complete the work, they don't do a good job of the work, um, and they're, they're not reputable. So what if a company offered a consumer report that says, here's the things you need to think about when you're hiring a home renovation company. And so they're basically saying how to select the right company. So the advantage with this kind of informational offer is it builds trust. It establishes a relationship first before it sells. And it offers evidence. So remember I'd mentioned that most businesses offer uh, generally use platitudes. Well, if you provide an informational offer like this, it provides evidence of those claims that you make, those basic platitudes that we put out there. And it also appeals to that 99% of the future buyers, between 97 and 99% of future buyers. So most customers have a threshold of resistance. The closer it is to the buying point, the more the resistance goes up. And so typically what happens is they, they um, put objections to purchase in the way of making a decision to buy. So when it comes to the number of buyers that are out there, like I say, between one and 3% are ready to buy right now. So the key is to make the right offer that gets them to buy now. 7% maybe in the next 30 days, 30% within the next six months, 30% in the next two years, and 30% probably will never buy from you, either because they're already happy with their supplier or they maybe have a resistance to something that you're offering that doesn't meet their needs. So here's the question for you is, why are we in a dogfight for the 3% of the market? And what about the other 67%? What are we doing to attract them? So if we look at a chiropractor as an example and talk about the threshold of resistance, and like I said, typically on most chiropractor sites, 
um, they have call or book a free exam. Well, there's no trust factor there. People don't know the chiropractor. So the key is to really provide something of value that's informational that gets people to decide that this is the right person to deal with. So it would be something like an informational offer. Might be a free back pain report that says, here's some revolutionary new treatments that cure back pain forever. Tips and ideas on how you can resolve your back pain on a future basis. That reduces the threshold. And then people will decide between that chiropractor and the many other options they have as to which is the right route to go. So I'm going to share with you a couple of examples around um, the various strategies we use from a marketing perspective. Uh, one's talking about how we make our marketing message or advertising message work. And the second one is to uh, talk about how a drip campaign can increase the number of uh, customers that you have coming in the door. So um, this is a uh, psychologist and this was an original website. Not bad, but there's several things wrong with the website. First of all, the, he the headline is very generic. Parenting advice and resources from Dr. John Smith. Probably many of his other colleagues offer the same thing. There's a video there with a, a script below it. There's nine different areas of specialty. So really what he's saying is he specializes, but he doesn't. And then it says, call now to book a 30 minute session. So it, it talks about all the things that I just mentioned about not being unique, not making the right offer and not giving any differentiating factor to customers. So this was the original script on the video, parenting advice and resources from Dr. John Smith. Greetings parents, my name is Dr. John Smith. I want to welcome you to a remarkable parenting. You'll find tons of great information here with hundreds of pages of articles and so on. And he talks about his nine different areas of expertise. Well, a parent that's dealing with a, a child that's acting out or causing problems in the household doesn't want hundreds of pages of articles and have to surf through a bunch of information or decide which area of expertise they need to address. They want to solve the problem now. So we rewrote the script for him and we created uh, a message based on that formula that I talked about er earlier, the con conversion formula. So how do we make the marketing message work? Well, this is a landing page, so it's different than a web page. A landing page serves one purpose, and that is to draw the customer in to resolve an issue or problem they're having right now. So attracting attention, first of all, is are you sick and tired of the yelling, screaming, belligerent attitude of your child? So a parent who's dealing with that will go, yeah, for sure. And now you can discover the secrets of controlling your child's instant and instantly restore peace and quiet in your home. Learn the secrets, 60 second tips, much easier for parents to deal with. And we changed the script as well. So people enter their name, it's kind of low risk and it makes it easy to solve the problem quickly for that parent. So as you can see with the script, um, it addresses, you know, are you, a struggle, are you struggling with the child's attitude and emotions? Um, is your child yelling and screaming? And I'm Dr. John Smith. I help parents like you learn techniques to solve these frustrating uh, patterns and so on. And let me prove it to you. Here's a 60 second technique that will help immediately restore peace and quiet in your home. Any parent that's dealing with that would probably say, say thank God that this is an option. So the original website results, he was getting an average of 300 leads a month. He was converting about 10%, which meant he was getting three people consenting to booking an appointment and three new patients. So that's about a 1% conversion rate. And like I say, the conversion formula, if we go back to that remake of, of the information on his marketing and creating a landing page is first of all, we interrupted the um, parent to address the specific issue they have. Second of all, we offered a solution. Third, we educated them on how quickly they could solve the problem using the 60 second techniques. And we made an offer that's simple and not difficult for customers to, to uh, take on. So making that revision wound up increasing the number of conversions to 60, per, uh, 60 customers out of the 300 and 
an average of six customers, sorry, 60 requests. Six of those became customers and the average sale was about $800 per uh, client, which was a $2,400 per month increase or an average of about uh, $30,000 in new revenue. So in addition to making that change to the landing page, we also implemented a drip campaign. So the drip campaign simply takes those leads that they get that didn't buy, puts them through a process of receiving useful and helpful information through email and converting those customers to paying customers. So you can see, you know, to buy and then they, they change to um, putting those 54 back into the funnel and again, continually connect, connect with them until they're ready to buy. So at the end of the first year, that landing page or squeeze page took 3,600 prospects, put them through a drip campaign, email drip campaign, created 72 new clients in 12 months. So, and 156 clients in addition to the 72. So we had 156 clients, the existing clients that they got plus the, the 72 new clients. So this is kind of what the numbers look like. I won't read them to you, but you can see that they got two clients, put the 54 back into the drip campaign. And then the next time around got two more clients, put the 52 in and so on. So it wound up creating 30 new patients every month as a result of the drip campaign process. So let me ask you with your business, is that something that you could do with your business and increase your revenues and increase the number of customers you have with a simple process of being able to keep customers informed so that we're ready to buy. So if we look at it, uh, we have in our software program, we have a profit, profit growth calculator. This is just a simple breakdown of how it works. So if we look at this, and um, if we have an average of a thousand leads, and we convert those leads at a 25% rate, it means we have 250 more sales and a simple 10% increase across everything that we do in our marketing. And we look at 48 different areas in the marketing process, depending on your business. So we create 10 new transactions and let's say our business, uh, they're buying a hundred dollar item. That means that we're getting $250,000 more revenue in our business. And we're creating 25% gross profit, which means it's $62,000 uh, in increased revenue. Now, if we look at increasing our revenues by 10%, first of all, we increase our leads. So by 10%, that means 1,100 leads. Uh, more conversions means 27.5%. So we have 303 sales now instead of 250. And we have 11 transactions instead of 10 per month which can increase, we can increase our prices as well as one opportunity to uh, get more revenue. So we're now at $366,000 in revenue and we'll increase our profit margin as well. So we're talking instead of 62,000, now 100,000 in more revenue. <laughs> now, also working with clients and being able to change the various approaches to marketing and be able to get more people into the funnel, create more conversions, we have the opportunity of increasing revenues by as much as 50%. So if we look at this, that means uh, leads are 1,500 now instead of 1,000. Our conversion rate's 37%. So we have 50, 563 more sales. Um, our revenues increased to uh, 1.2 million. And our profits are now just about half a million dollars. And so we're able to analyze the business through the software, look at the areas that they're not gaining profits through lack of marketing or not doing the marketing in an effective way and be able to increase profits anywhere from 10% to over 50%, depending on what the business is currently doing. So in addition to the um, software program that we use to analyze a business from marketing perspective, marketing and sales perspective, we have an e-learning library. So as a coach, I work with businesses to provide them an ongoing learning process. So remember I talked about the information aspect of the business and being able to educate customers. 
Well, this gives people opportunity to look at videos that address various aspects of marketing so that they're learning as they're building their business. And then there's also a, a weekly email campaign that goes out that provides tips and ideas on how to improve your marketing. And then in addition to that, I work with customers to help develop their marketing strategies through a coaching process. So this is a screenshot, as you can see, of the uh, software program. And uh, so this is uh, one aspect of the software that analyzes uh, the digital platform where people are putting information into the digital world. And so we look at, uh, like I say, up to 48 different areas in our entire program, our software program, and determine where the lack of, of marketing results is and how we can increase or improve that marketing. So if we go back to the example now of the uh, medical doctor, here's how this works. We, we looked at, in this case, we looked at these different areas, 40 different areas of the business, and we only analyzed, you can see here, there's only four areas of improvement that we looked at to be able to increase his revenue by almost doubling the revenue. And so you can see here that um, it shows the amount of revenue that was generated and the percentage increase based on analysis of what they're doing. So his current or his original revenue was $250,000. The expected increase in revenue based on that process that we developed for the doctor was an increase of $152,000, which wound up the annual gross revenues was uh, over $400,000. And that's just the beginning. But it gives you an idea how effective this can be when we look at the different aspects of marketing and make it more effective, provide an informational offer, and be able to look at areas that we can uh, create increases without a whole lot of extra expenditure. So like I say, we look at the foundation of the business. So that's the strategy and systems and processes in place. We look at how we can generate more leads through multiple different ways. And Alan's gonna talk about using LinkedIn as a lead generation tool. We're gonna to create more conversions based on the fact that we're giving people information that can help them decide that you're the business they wanna work with. We're gonna develop more transactions out of that simply by making the customers aware that you are the only provider that's going to do what they need and help them solve their business problem. So uh, Alan's uh, put up a Q&A sign here. So if you have questions, uh, Yeah, feel Carol free had to a question, David. What's up? She said, Carol had a question. She said, oh. does the informational offer need to be unique, a document that you develop internally? Uh, it can be. Uh, <laughs> in some cases, it can be information that's like a white paper, or it can be information, say, if you're providing supplies or, or you're supplying something through a, a provider that you work with and that information can be shared. The key with it is not to pitch uh, a product or service, but to offer information that helps people solve a problem. So let's say you're a cleaning company. What if you talked about um, information about how to deal with the COVID situation and keep your house clean or your business clean? So that might be an example of an informational offer. Or and Deepak asked, does your framework work for a company like us who's in the technology service with the larger deal sizes? Yeah, the size of the company doesn't matter. Um, it's more about the information and how you're marketing your, your product or service and how to stand out in the marketplace. So, uh, yes, we have worked with technology companies and, and looked at um, how they're marketing their information. Here's a little secret for all of you, by the way. Most companies sell features and that's what you do and what's in your systems or processes they don't sell the benefit and that's what is the customer going to gain from it what's the solution you provide so if you go back and analyze what you're doing and your information is talking all about everything you offer and systems and processes that are in your company and so on that's not the information you need to put on your marketing communications. So Salma asked, would that framework work for a tourism service company as well? Absolutely. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I have been doing work in the tourism industry right now. And one of the challenges they've got is uh, building trust with customers around the safety aspect of travel and uh, tourism. So 
being able to convince people that the ability to travel and uh, tour uh, is is safe and there's uh, cautions in place and people are going to feel comfortable in that environment is the key really in the tourism industry right now is to build that relationship of trust. So Patty asked, what strategies do you, sorry, someone is asking the question, what strategies do you recommend for startups who are not marketing yet? Oh, I, I think the key is first of all, to take a look at who your target market is, where they go to get information about uh, say competitors in your business. Because as you enter a marketing space as a new company, you need to know what are the competitors doing? What's attracting the customers? What are the customer's preferences? And then from there, look for an opportunity in the space that the, the competition is not delivering and, and approach the market from perspective of what makes you stand out. Try not to do everything for everybody. Don't take yeah. that approach. We have lots more questions. What's going to happen? Uh, I'm going to make sure we save this uh, the chat box and Dave is going to email you the answers to you. So we have another three or four questions. So we want to get on, move on with the presentation here. So David, just, just download the file afterwards and then the individual people who are on here, we have their email addresses. We can just email the answers to them, right? Uh, yeah, there's just one more question that's really simple to, to answer and that is uh, when do you start seeing tangible results? Um, we look at a coaching program on a yearly basis, but I can tell you many of the customers we've worked with have seen results in as little as uh, one to three months uh, just simply by taking a look at what they're doing and improving on um, other areas of their business that they didn't think about. Awesome. And Dave is amazing at that. He put me through the analysis myself and the information I got afterwards was so valuable to my company. So let's move on here though. Now we're going to talk about LinkedIn for lead generation or marketing. Thank you so much, David. If you can manage the chat box, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, LinkedIn. It's amazing. I love it. I'm on there, you know, 24 seven almost. My wife hates me for it, but you know, I've been doing LinkedIn for 13 years now, a trainer for nine years. And I'm always amazed at the brand new features and functions that LinkedIn comes out with that people don't even know about. LinkedIn is terrible for putting out information on its own website. And I guess that's great for me because I help my clients like you guys figure out where things are, what, what new features are out there. A little history on LinkedIn. It was launched in 2003 by Reid Hoffman and Alan Blue and CEO Jeff Weiner. It was acquired by Microsoft for $26 billion in 2013. Uh, just imagine, you know, 13 years of work and you sell your company for $26 billion. That's a pretty good ROI. Uh, it has got 860 million users as of today. I said April 2021, but that's tomorrow. So, but I just did a number analysis on LinkedIn from one of my uh, sources and it's over 860 million users. 280 million people are using LinkedIn actively monthly, 160 million users in North America, which is phenomenal for people in USA and Canada, and 40% of people use LinkedIn daily. And then US, Canada, India, Brazil, and UK have the highest numbers. And <laughs> pardon me, one of the most important things is people on LinkedIn, they have the money to spend on your services and products which is, you know, more than Facebook. So Facebook average earner is $30,000 a year. Uh, LinkedIn average uh, earner is 75,000 plus per year. So people have the money to spend on LinkedIn. There are over 320 million business professionals around the world using LinkedIn. And nearly 50% of LinkedIn members have decision-making authority. So, you know, if you ever contacted someone on Facebook or some other channel and they have to talk to the boss uh, it does, doesn't happen as much on LinkedIn because usually they are the boss. Uh, LinkedIn posts reach an estimated 9 billion people each month. And I'm using the content features on LinkedIn uh, with my uh, video creation, which I'll talk about at the very, very end over here, more than ever. Uh, LinkedIn has a tiny fraction of content creators compared to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. But it has huge organic reach, which means if you're an early adopter on LinkedIn right now, with your content marketing, you can outperform your competition. I'm always amazed when I go on to my, uh, you know, uh, weekly uh, Zoom calls with people from LinkedIn who want to talk to me about using my services or have questions on LinkedIn. And I'm always amazed at their lack of uh, filling out their profiles and the lack of content marketing they're using on LinkedIn or doing on LinkedIn. Really, that leaves you know the the landscape open for all of us. 
So why is it important? It's got an amazing job board. You can build your brand and a huge network. It can help you rank on Google. Google indexes LinkedIn really, really well. So if you put an article or put something on LinkedIn, you might see it on page one of Google. It maintains a Rolodex of your contents, gives you reach globally. I have clients all over the world. You can research companies and their employees. Uh, you can uh, tap into industry news. It provides you an opportunity to network. And uh, a, um, a person asked me the other day, you know, I thought LinkedIn was just a giant job board. I was a way to network with people. Can you really use it for, link, for lead generation or marketing? And the answer is absolutely yes. I built my whole business on lead generation and marketing on LinkedIn over the last nine years. I'll show you what I'm doing in a few minutes here. So let's talk about your profile though first. It's more than a resume. It's your personal brand platform. It's a marketing tool to expand your network and grow credibility and authority. Uh, that's one of the number one things I think that we all face when we're trying to sell new clients is do they find us being credible? You know, how, how many times have we had someone approach us and we actually went through our whole sales pitch and then they asked us for references so that 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 degree of credibility, that barrier to credibility you have in your company on LinkedIn, you got to make sure that you're doing all the things on LinkedIn to pass that barrier of credibility. So when people are coming to you and they want to buy from you, you talk to them, they don't have to worry, worry about references. They think you're credible already. Uh, you can also stand up for your competition. You can show off your successes in your company. And as we're doing right now, LinkedIn has a new feature that came out. Well, it's not new. It's about a year and a, a, year and a quarter old. Um, but people don't, are using it still. And that's the event platform. And I'll talk about that once again at the end of the presentation today. So cover banners and photos. Everybody's heard the old saying, you only get one chance to make a first impression. So it's super important your cover banner and especially your photo look outstanding. 99% of people on LinkedIn still have no cover banner. I think it's a big mistake as well as they have a terrible headshot. Make sure your cover banner and your headshot look amazing. And I'll stop my presentation and go to Google for a second here. And, you know, uh, I often will go to my network on LinkedIn and I will decide sometimes, and I'm sure you guys will decide sometimes whether or not you'll accept someone's invitation on LinkedIn. Let me close all these little boxes here. Um, uh, you know, decide on LinkedIn whether or not to, uh, sorry about that, uh, whether or not to um, uh, accept someone's you know, uh, request to connect with you based upon their actual, let's turn my phone off here. Sorry about that. Uh, based upon their cover photo or their banner. So, you know, super, super important that you make sure that you have a, an amazing cover banner and photo uh, and, and photo on LinkedIn. And I always tell people on LinkedIn, uh, you know, make sure that it looks outstanding. And I'll show you an example of this over here. So here are some exa examples of great cover banners and photos. Uh, as you can see, they're very colorful. I always tell people, if you're not an expert in, you know, designing graphics, then please hire someone to do it for you. And I do cover banners for my clients all the time as part of my program and part of my job. Uh, now your, your headshot. So as you can see, these headshots here are very clear and the outstanding theme in all the headshots are people are smiling. They look professional, clean cut business. You know, how many times have we seen someone's uh, uh, profile photo and they're like a cutout from a wedding there you can tell they're you know standing beside somebody else and they're hugging somebody or whatever or they're you know in Mexico uh, with a Hawaiian t-shirt uh, and drinking a beer and that's the cover photo on LinkedIn so if you're professional in a business now if you're in the let's say uh, travel and tourism industry um, you definitely can have a Hawaiian shirt, uh, you know, in front of a, a palm tree, not drinking a beer, obviously, but, you know, you can have those kind of things. All depends what you, kind of business you're in, but make sure your professional headshot looks great and you don't necessarily have to have a professional photographer take it for you. Nowadays, uh, smartphones have such great cameras. You can usually take, you know, two dozen headshots and pick the best one. And then you can put it on your profile afterwards as cameras have really, or our phones have really high resolution cameras. 
Uh, why optimize your profile on LinkedIn? An optimized profile ranks higher in LinkedIn searches by recruiters, hiring manage, managers, and potential clients, resulting in more opportunities. And LinkedIn's great about this. If you go on your profile, uh, usually right below your name uh, and the cover banner and the top information, they'll tell you how uh, filled out your profile is uh, on your on your LinkedIn uh, you know section there and they'll tell you what what areas to fill finish off or fill out uh, so you know really uh, you want to figure out this on your own it'll tell you what to do uh, LinkedIn shows you what percentage of your profile is complete so you want you know where to add more information and then you can go on to your profile here on this section over here let's go to my profile here on LinkedIn uh, where is me here we are. So if I go on, on LinkedIn over here and I just scroll down, you can see this little box pops up over here. So if you're wondering where to add the different areas or where, 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 how to fill out those sections, this is the part you use over here, add profile section. And all you have to do is go to the very bottom of your profile and usually where it says open to in these parts over here, it'll show you how filled out your profile is. Uh, your headline, which is right below or right by your name, um, what not to do with it. So don't use it as a job title alone, like the CEO of my company. Don't make it too general. So there are four things people want to know when they come to your profile and look at your cover banner. And these things are, and please write this down if you have a chance to. Who are you? What do you do? Especially, what can you do for me? And also, why should I use your services as opposed to the hundreds or thousands of other people on LinkedIn who do exactly what the same thing you do? And if you go to LinkedIn and you type in the search bar, your professional job title like financial planner or something else, there are usually hundreds or thousands of other people on LinkedIn who do exactly the same thing you do. And if you can take this information, that's the very, very top, and you can put it on anybody else's profile who are in the same industry you're in, then your profile or your, your title is not unique enough. And I like doing this way, that I like the way this whole thing's formatted. This little thing over here is called a pipe and it is right be on your keyboard, right above the enter key and you press the shift and the key above the enter key to create that pipe. Not, it's not a capital I, it's called a pipe. And if you go to a little trick over here, I'll share my sound on LinkedIn. Hopefully you guys can hear this. Hi, I'm Alan Fine from LinkedIn Leads, and I can get you a never ending stream of leads from LinkedIn. That's a little cool little feature. So that's a little button that's supposed to be for how to pronounce your name, but they'll give you 10 seconds. So I put a little marketing message on there. You can only access that through the mobile app. That's not on desktop. So if you're trying to figure out where the hell it is, it's not in desktop. It's only on the mobile app. When you're using LinkedIn SEO, <clears throat> which is, thank you very much, <laughs> Adriana. Um, when you're doing LinkedIn SEO, and what that means exactly is when you type in a key phrase like financial advisor on LinkedIn, why do some certain people are, are on the top of the, uh, of the search? And why are people below? Well, it's how they formatted their profile as well as it's how you're connected to them. Are they your first connection? Are they a connection of your other connection? So I'll go over this more later on. There are three kinds of connections on LinkedIn. But what do you want to do for LinkedIn SEO is you want to use the keywords that are targeted to your audience. So if you're using, you know, if you're a financial planner, let's say again, uh, make sure you have the word financial planner if that's what you want to show up for on LinkedIn. Uh, make sure you have other things in your uh, profile and, you, and you're on your about section that have the things like, you know, financial health, uh, financial wealth for families, those kind of phrases without putting too many phrases in there. It's called keyword stuffing. You don't want to have too many phrases in there, but you want to have enough phrases in there that sound natural, that speak to your audience in the uh, industry you're in to make sure you attract people that you believe would be your potential clients. More headline examples. Um, 
Yes, this is recorded to watch Todd. Uh, human resource consultant, helping smart managers keep their employees engaged and productive. Salesforce trainer, are you pushing your CRM to its full potential? No, contact me, I'll help you. So you might want to put that kind of phrase on there where you say, you know, are you doing your thing well? Are you, do you have questions about your business or about, you know, my services? Or do you have questions about the industry that we're talking about on my profile? No, contact me, I'll help you. That's a really good one to have on there. Uh, commercial realtor, connecting business owners to properties they will love. Another headline. Uh, I equip businesses to 10 times their end user interactions, boosting sales, leads, conversions, and collections. Uh, you know, so someone asked, uh, what kind of headlines should I have if I run more of one business? That's a good question, Salma, and I'll be able to answer that at the very end, all right? Another, another example of a headline, uh, this person has a huge following. Look at 403,000 followers. Digital marketing and content expert. You can tell she speaks at live events and big live events. So she's an expert and she's an influencer. Your summary is called the about section now. This is the guts of your LinkedIn profile. You have 2,000 characters to describe who you are. And once again, answering these questions for people. Who are you? What do you do? How can you help me? And why should I choose you as opposed to everybody else in the same industry you're in? So it's very, very important you build that out in your summary and you give some examples, maybe some case studies, maybe some links to some other websites that you have information about yourself on. Uh, you know, remarkably, most people have terrible summaries that don't answer those four questions. So uh, your about section is not just a job description. Make sure, as David said beforehand, you're talking about the benefits to your clients so many people I see in their headlines and their, their about section, it's all about features. We've been in business 20 years and we're in you know 10 different uh, countries, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? The one thing people want to know is what's in it for me. So you should be, you know, you should be thinking about what do people tell you on a regular basis about your business? And you often hear this from your clients. Oh, Dave, oh, Susan, I love working with you. I love working with you because of dot, dot, dot. Or, you know, it's amazing working with you because, <coughs> excuse me, we work with other companies in your same industry and they were crap and you're great and you're great because of dot, dot, dot. Write those things down on paper. And if you don't know what they are, go to your clients and ask them and say, hey, listen, I'm, you know, redoing my, my work, my marketing on LinkedIn, we're we redoing things. Why do you like working with me? Ask them straight out. Send out a survey. Incentivize people to tell you. Uh, I had a client who gave away Tim Horton's gift cards uh, to people when they answered this you know, brief little survey monkey survey about why the people like working with them. But the information they received was invaluable. They were able to totally rewrite their whole description, their summary, their about section, and that really started communicating the message of why them to their potential clients and their sales went through the roof. So what the, are the pain points also you hear from your potential clients? What are they talking about on a regular basis? When clients come to you, what are the things they're, they're concerned about? What are the things they're initially asking you for to solve in their business? Once again, write those things down. Very, very important. And also, um, yeah, thank you, David. Uh, yeah, so your, your summary and about section must also the keywords for your target audience. But don't make it over technical, overly technical. I've seen people's uh, I've seen people's LinkedIn profiles, and I guess if you're not deep in the industry, I had no idea what the hell they're talking about. And so, someone who might be looking for someone who isn't as technical about the industry or the business or things, they might be going, well, "What the hell does that mean?" Right? So we've all seen that beforehand. It's like when you go to someone's website and you look at it, if you can understand it right away. If you're a layman and you're looking at a website or a person's profile and it doesn't make sense to you, that might be the same thing happening to your client or your potential clients or looking at your information, your website, your summary and going, well, I don't understand this at all. So make sure you ask people, does it make sense to you? What do you think about this? What does this mean to you possibly? 
So those are the kind of questions you should be asking people. Your profile should make you look like you're an absolute expert in your field. Provide data to back up those results. Once again, case studies, testimonials, reviews. You know, I've always, and I'll talk more about this in the, the, the you know, further up in the presentation, but recommendations on my LinkedIn profile are very, very important. Uh, mention if your team is hiring, uh, highlight professional interest, and also include contact information. How many times have we all gone to someone's LinkedIn profile and, you know, you want to work with them, you want to call them, maybe they're your first connection, maybe they aren't but you have no idea of how to contact them. Their email address isn't there. Their uh, phone number isn't there. Their websites are there, but they're old and they don't even work anymore. How many of us have gone to someone's profile, drives me crazy, click on their website and the website doesn't work even? Like does it make you look very, very professional, very, very trustworthy, right? So make sure that all the information on your LinkedIn profile is up to date. Demonstrate your passion, have some fun, personality, make yourself approachable. Like you said in the your headshot, make sure you're smiling. I've seen clients argue the heck with me, uh, you know, saying they want to look stoic or they want to look, you know, professional and they don't smile at all. Well, no one wants to work with someone like that. So you're very, very important. You look approachable. You know, you have two different uh, headshots on two different profiles. One is smiling, looks engaging, right? You know, it looks like they're helping people all the time. Other person who might be a really nice person, but is not smiling, which one are you going to go to, right? So make sure you're also using first person eyes as opposed to we's on your profile. Uh, you know, uh, the number one takeaway I can tell you on LinkedIn, write this down, people want to deal and work with people, not some nameless faceless corporation. So they're buying you as much as they're buying your services or buying into the company. Here's some samples of great professional headlines. David will pop that into the chat box there. Rich media. So uh, on your LinkedIn profile, you can put in rich media. You can put in uh, you know uh, videos. You can put in PDFs. You can put other things in there. Um, here's an example of my profile, which I just added some new rich media uh, on my profile. So videos, videos are very, very important. <coughs> you can put PDFs on here. You can put uh, slideshows, slide, sli slide share shows. You can put so many different things on here uh, on LinkedIn. Um, also, LinkedIn usually has a, a 10 minute limit on um, uh, on uh, you know how long your videos can be, I found you can bypass that if you put on a, uh, a a link to a YouTube video. It can be as long as you want because it's a link. It's not actually a, a video loaded up to LinkedIn. And all you do is go to your pro ad profile section and go into your uh, feature section and go to media and this box pop box pops up and you can add video or you can add. Uh, links to places. Here's the links bar, okay? And so you can put a YouTube link in here. And once you put a link in here, another box pops up describing what that, that link is about. Uh, how do I rank on LinkedIn? So this is the social selling index, which LinkedIn gives you. Um, so you can get a brief or a overall uh, idea of how you rank on LinkedIn. Now I'll tell you right now, this is a tool for the Sales Navigator uh, a business on LinkedIn, which is one of the premium memberships on LinkedIn. This is a sales tool for them because all these links here establish your professional brand, find the right people, engage with insights and build relationships. If you click on those, they don't give you more information about yourself. They all go to a sales navigator landing page. So while this is an overall view of how well you're selling, selling and how well you're engaging with your potential clients on LinkedIn, this is once again also a sales navigator uh, selling tool. Uh, content marketing on LinkedIn. People are always asking me, why is it important to be posting articles and posts on a regular basis? because it shows you are the absolute authority in your industry. 
I always post two or three posts per week or articles, um, as well as, uh, as I said beforehand, I recently got heavily into video marketing. I recently took a $5,000 US course on how to do video marketing on LinkedIn, and David joined me on that. And now, on a regular basis, I'm creating videos like this on LinkedIn. Uh, where is my profile here? Let me go to here for a second and go to my activity. So here's my newest, newest one I just loaded up today. So there's a very, very special way to do this on LinkedIn. And I'll share my sound and uh, go here and go here. Recommendations are important on LinkedIn. They're just like having a Google review or testimonial. So recommendations on LinkedIn, what are they? Why should you have them? Recommendations are at the bottom of your profile on LinkedIn. And my personal take is the more the merrier. Let's face it, it's important to have lots of them, especially from other people with high credibility on LinkedIn. Have you ever gone to Amazon or eBay and read the reviews before you buy? Most of us have. In fact, the stats say the majority of consumers actually look at reviews or testimonials before they buy. In fact, the research published by Fan and Fuel say that over 88% of consumers read testimonials or review and they influence their decision before they buy. So, why should LinkedIn be any different? Here's how to get a recommendation. Number one, make sure they're your first connection. So don't ask for recommendations from people you don't even know. Number two, once you go to their profile on LinkedIn, click on the more button and click on request a recommendation. Number three, click on the request a recommendation and a new box pops open. Are they your client or are you their client? And then the second drop down will be what company are you representing? When the next box comes up, you can either put a customized recommendation message, which I recommend, or use a standard one that LinkedIn gives you. Once you've sent them a recommendation request, I think it's very important to follow that up with an email, a phone call, or a message on LinkedIn saying that you've requested a recommendation. And then you can also send them one in return. If you feel this video was helpful to you, please like or comment in the box below. And have a great day. There you go. So I was going to put the post for that thing. So you think that video is uh, important to you. If you want to put that video or give it somebody else at all, there it is. You can comment on it. You can, you know, you can do, um, uh, uh, you know so many things and video is going to be absolutely huge in 2021 people who are early adapters or early adopters of uh, video creation on linkedin are going to get massive engagement and i'm using that along with my other things like my article writing formula thank you very much deborah i appreciate that so i teach my clients now how to do these videos because there's a certain way and the video marketing course i took was especially made for LinkedIn. It wasn't made for YouTube, wasn't made for Twitter. It was made especially for LinkedIn. So, you know, my whole goal on LinkedIn is to get 100,000 plus followers uh, on as of the end of this year. So if you wanna go to my profile and follow me, I'll be posting more information on how to do these videos uh, later on. Uh, for people who are posting articles or posts, here's my article writing formula. Uh, if you want to email me afterwards, they will pop my information into the chat box, and I'll be happy to send this to you. But it's very, very simple. Usually when I do an <clears throat> uh, article on LinkedIn, I'll think of an idea, then I'll Google it, and then I find uh, articles or other things on, on LinkedIn um, uh, you know, that are similar. Uh, I'll give, give me some ideas, get my brain flowing, then I'll find a graphic on, link, on, on Google. Um, to find the graphic to use in the, in the uh, article or post, a powerful headline that sucks you in. Because uh, just, just think about this for a second. Everybody close your eyes for one second and think of the word whale. Did you see a whale in your mind's eye or did you see W-H-A-L-E? Most people see a picture of a whale. So people think in pictures. So it's very, very important that when you're writing and putting together the headlines and the subheadlines for your marketing, for your articles, for your posts, 
uh, make sure that you do something that sucks people in. Like, have you ever walked by a newspaper stand in a mall when malls were open, you know, the same way as now beforehand, and you walked by a newspaper stand and you saw the newspaper headline and it kind of sucked you in. You kind of actually walked towards it for a second to read what they were talking about. So those are the kind of things you want to do. Newspapers have the same type of formula. Um, here is one of the people uh, that, you know, used video creation and marketing early on, probably started four years ago. And now this person, Bridget, who I have been following for the last four years, when I started following her, maybe she had 30,000, 40,000 followers on her profile, but now she has 3.682 million followers as of yesterday. So can you get a massive following on LinkedIn? And she's in Trinidad, Tobago, which is not to minimize that, but, uh, you know, and actually look at the followers in the bottom over here where it says 2 million. This is when I started to do this with David uh, back in October 2020. She had only 2 million followers. She's gotten over a million followers, new followers from October of 2020 to now. So anybody can do this. It's just a matter of being very consistent and creating the right kind of information and creating the right kind of videos that will attract people and help them out. Uh, so uh, people talk about experiences in LinkedIn, and this is this section over here. You know, how do you, how do you manage having multiple positions or multiple jobs? People often ask me, should I create two profiles? And the answer is absolutely no. You just want to create a different experience on LinkedIn and make sure that experience is tied to a company page. Here are company pages on LinkedIn. Click on more and then or work. Uh, and then you create a company page over here at the very bottom. This pops up and you can create a new a new small business company page or a medium large business or a showcase page. A showcase page is when you have a company page on LinkedIn. Let's say you're a, you're a car manufacturer like GM or Hyundai or Ford, and you want to have multiple showcase pages pages within your company page to show off your brands. And, you know, it's very, very important to have this. Um, also, people ask me, you know, should I be posting my content on my company page or my profile? And the answer to that one is definitely on your profile more. Once again, people want to deal with people, not some nameless faces corporations. Company pages are important. One of those things like having a website. Well, I hope you have a website, right, before I work with you. Well, I hope you have a company page on LinkedIn, just making sure that all your I's are dotted and T's are crossed. Uh, and you can have multiple experiences on your, uh, your profile, on your, on your LinkedIn profile. Make sure you put some information in there, right? Uh, make sure you describe achievements, initiatives you want to move the company forward. Uh, and your entire profile should point out the benefits of working with you. It's not a resume, it's a sales tool. So remember, benefits, not so much features. Benefits, benefits, benefits. What are the benefits working with you? What kind of results will your clients possibly achieve working with you? As you can see, my sample of my, uh, you know, my experience on LinkedIn and how much information I have on it. A LinkedIn event platform. So you're all here from the LinkedIn event platform, and it's really amazing how to use it. So many people don't know it even exists even still. So the LinkedIn event platform is on LinkedIn. All you do is go to the home page, and you can see the uh, event platform here on LinkedIn. Here it is. Click on the plus button and create your own event, and then you pull all your information in here. You don't deliver the content like Facebook Live. You don't deliver the content on LinkedIn unless you have LinkedIn Live account, but most, most people just use a third-party uh, software program like Zoom. So this is how you do it. But then if you create your company page properly on LinkedIn, and there's a trick to this, you can actually get the managed attendees and download the registration details, which gives us all their names and all their email addresses. So People who join my program work with me. I told them this little trick over here on how to get people's uh, information. And then you can recommend, you can notify your attendees, you can send information, you can do, uh, you know, uh, you can chat with people on LinkedIn here. So it's uh, really pretty amazing what you can do over here, all these different features and functions. Uh, David and I run one of these uh, workshops every single month. 
So if you felt this one was great today, send people to follow my page and they'll be notified on the next workshop happening probably in May or June. And the last thing I want to talk to, to you about today is the hottest thing on, in LinkedIn is video creation. So here's one of my teachers and here's the kind of results he's gotten on his videos, which I hope to have in mind eventually. You know, you can see 1,300 likes, 380 comments, 26,499 uh, views, uh, 1,600 likes, 531 comments, 27,000 views, and then 1,700 likes, 576 comments, and 43,000 views. When I get to this point myself of having this many people on my profile, I'll be hiring someone to help me uh, answer all these uh, comments on LinkedIn because otherwise I'll take up all my time. So I hope you guys learned some amazing information today. We have some great information for you guys and we have some great, a great deal for you to uh, you know, work on from this, uh, this presentation because we know that from our presentations, people want help. And we often, uh, you know, don't don't do these kind of discounts. I never do discounts myself at all. But on the presentation here, we have a uh, great offer for you. So here's the deal. I was going to go to it on a web page here. Copy and paste and go. So David, you want to unmute yourself also? I'll talk about my part of my deal on here, and you can talk about your part of the deal. So yep. on this deal over here, what I'm going to do is my uh, foundation proc package, which I'm going to re redo your entire LinkedIn profile for you, a new cover banner, on how you take new headshots, I'm going to Photoshop those headshots for you, I'm going to work on your uh, about section, your headline for you, optimizing, we're going to talk about your, uh, you know, what you can put on there as rich media content, I'll reorder your skills, I'm going to copyright the whole thing, and then I'm going to show you exactly on LinkedIn through doing a two hour Zoom call with you, what you should be doing and how to do it and record it and give it to you afterwards. So, you know, I usually charge a thousand dollars for this and David has his offer over here and the webinar special is gonna be only a thousand dollars for the whole thing. And he usually charges, you know, a thousand dollars also. So it's gonna be a $2,000 offer for only half the price. And David, you can go ahead. Yeah, you bet, Ellen. So uh, the offer that uh, we're giving to people on this webinar is, uh, first of all, as I mentioned, I have a, a proprietary software program that we use um, to do a diagnostic of your sales and marketing within your business. And um, we uh, will take a look at an initial 12 different areas within the business that we could possibly improve for you, increase your revenues um, very quickly. Uh, the second part is then uh, you'll get access to a weekly newsletter, which has tips and ideas that I've mentioned um, for an entire year on how you can improve your marketing and also access to our e-learning platform, which has videos and tutorials related to all the different topic areas connected to your marketing. So uh, that's all included in the offer. And, and uh, as Alan mentioned, uh, you know, we charge uh, $2,000 just for that aspect of the, the uh, offer. And so Alan and I are offering this to people who have attended the website, uh, a webinar, I should say, for a one-time price of $9.97 US, or you can make payments as well, as you can see on the, online here. I popped the link for this offer into um, our chat window as well. So you're welcome to go directly to the offer. And there is a uh, buy now button, so you can go there. Uh, if you'd like to chat with us, our contact information, like I say, was in the chat as well. Yeah, they're going to pop in there again, right? Sure, so it's in there. Pop, yeah. pop, pop, pop back in there again. Yeah. The right bottom. Just, uh, yeah. And then we're going to answer all your questions now. So if you want to unmute yourself, I'm going to go back to the questions beforehand um, and then just go from, you know, all the ones we have here. Uh, let me see here. Let's go back to uh, when I started talking. Um, okay, Veronica asked, uh, she's been a client of mine for over three years. He's always been learning new tips and tricks. Um, okay, was well, more testimonial. Thank you, Veronica. <laughs> uh, let's see here if we have uh, next question here. Um, how 
How do you know a course is worth paying for? Seems so many repetitive and not really in depth. Well, you may be referring to my video creation course. So, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, you know, uh, because I've been in LinkedIn for 13 years and been a uh, actual LinkedIn lead generation expert for nine years, I know. So I, I pre-vet all my information for my clients and I make sure I see the results on those things before I sell my clients anything at all. So, you know, my whole thing is if I can't show you the results for you, you're not going to pay for my information at all. So I, I usually guarantee my services uh, to make sure that my clients are seeing results. And you can, you know, if you don't believe me, go to the bottom of my profile on LinkedIn and just look at the uh, recommendations I have on my profile. So I think I'm up to... 83 recommendations. I got a couple of new ones coming in today. So, uh, you know, don't believe me. And that's the great thing about LinkedIn recommendations. You can go to these people's profiles and see who the heck they are. And so don't believe me and don't believe David. Go to our profiles, look at our recommendations and see what people are talking about uh, within our, our world here. So we have some more questions here. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, one of the questions, Ellen, was uh, tips for B2B on LinkedIn. So I think a lot of that we've addressed already today. Um, the key thing is, is think about who your major customer is and, and uh, focus your efforts on LinkedIn in that regards, because you can't be all things to all people. So think about the majority primary customer you deal with and write your co content and your information in that regard. And other people will look at it and decide at that point whether they're a customer or not. Um, but you really want to focus on your primary target market. Yeah. Uh, so to, uh, another question or another thing I want to point out also is how many of us have received a connection request from somebody on LinkedIn only to have that person try to sell you something right away. So if you're going to send someone a connection request, you know, the old saying, no one will care how much you know until they know how much you care. Very, very true on LinkedIn. Uh, make sure you don't try to pitch someone your services too quickly. Ask them questions about them. Ask them questions about what's happening in their world, how they're doing with COVID, what's going on with their business, what's happening. And make sure you offer something for free to them. Uh, you know, how can I possibly support you? So it's very, very important that you, you know, really show that you care to somebody before that you, be, before you, uh, you know, um, try to sell them something. Uh, Lana asked, does LinkedIn limit viewing like Facebook does in regard to link, link, link in a post that takes persons away from link, LinkedIn? I'm not sure what you mean by that, but I, I'll, show you, I'll tell you something, though. Uh, if you don't have a premium membership, and there are four basically out there, and I didn't get a chance to talk about them today, but the premium memberships are career, business, sales navigator, and recruiter. You want to have a premium membership on LinkedIn. Because otherwise, if you are doing actual lead generation and marketing on LinkedIn, LinkedIn will all of a sudden hit you with that. You view too many profiles and will stop you until your limit refreshes the next month. So LinkedIn, LinkedIn's limit refresh each month. But it's, you know, I think it's important to have a, a pay for membership on LinkedIn. Um, okay. Right. I don't see any more questions there. Oh, uh, Alan, another one says, how can you write articles for groups you're a member of? Right. So, uh, you know, uh, probably what I would do personally first is get together with those people on Zoom or a phone call or something. And the first thing I do personally is I figure out what would be the headlines for the articles. Uh, you know, so I usually brainstorm with my clients and, you know, you know how, um, it's very hard for us to see our, our own stuff uh, where anybody else can see better than us about our own lives or about our business. You can always give someone advice about their business, but when it comes to your own business, it's hard sometimes. So try to ask people and, and connect with people and maybe do a mastermind or a joint venture with other people get on there. When, once I have the ideas for the articles, like, I don't know, for this guy over here, um, 
I know he's, uh, you know, he, he, he inve helps inventors get things online. So it might be an article for him might be, you know, the number, the five mistakes inventors make when trying to roll out a new product. And then what you do is go to Google and then you Google the, that headline. And then what you see other people are writing about. And usually that gets the old juices flowing. Uh, so, uh, Ruth asks, any suggestions for newbies to service their business coaching? We don't have any clients or brand that could carry over the banner image and fill out a headline summary. We don't keep revising it. Well, you know, the great thing about LinkedIn, Ruth Ann, is the fact that it is a living, breathing organism. You can always revise your profile, your summary, your, your banner, your headshot. It doesn't have to be staying on there forever, but you want to make sure that everything is done properly as far as if you do have a website, make sure your website's in your contact information. Make sure that all your information's in here properly. Make sure it's updated on a regular basis. Make sure it's new, right? So, uh, you know, and then, uh, and then for me personally, you know, I've always been of the mentality that if I'm not the absolute expert in something, like I won't try to fix my car engine. Uh, I just tried to uh, Google how to change my battery on my Dodge Avenger. And I, I saw that you got to take off the, uh, the driver's side wheel and go through the wheel well. I'm not doing it myself. I'm hiring someone to do it for me. So if you're not an expert in something, it might be a good idea to hire a coach or hire somebody to help you out with uh, putting together your, your business. The investment would be good in the sense that they could probably take you years ahead of where you are now very quickly because, you know, how much, how many of us have spent time or money on something trying to figure something out ourselves? Well, and I was just going to make a comment in regards to the article writing too. One of the things um, suggested from a marketing perspective, when you first join a group, don't jump on and start posting content already. Build conversations. In a lot of cases, you can comment on people's uh, information they posted in there and share information in return. But if you start posting heavy content in a group and you're not uh, really building relationships, people may actually bump you out of the group. So yeah, if you're trying to sell too hard, relationships. if it's all sales, all about you and all sales, that might bump you out. I guess a great, great uh, you know, comment there, David, is to comment on other people's articles and posts and show value. So yeah, Chris exactly. will ask you, does your branding include branding business logo? Yeah, uh, Crystal, just in that regards, um, we do take a look at all of the different aspects of branding. Um, I have done branding work also uh, with numerous companies over the last 40 years of being in business in the marketing industry. And so I have a pretty good sense with brands as to how effective they'll be and how, uh, how they will uh, work for you in the market. So the short answer is yes. <laughs> there you go. Does anybody else have any questions? You'll all get the replay. I'll be doing the Zoom thing as far as uh, the rendering the video here, and I'll have it out to you all in about an hour or two hours from now. So you can watch it again if you want to. And then, you know, if you want to contact us and have a conversation about, you know, how we can help you, uh, once again, Dave, you want to pop our information in there one more time as far as our uh, links to our emails and all the information and our phone numbers. Yeah, you bet. Just a second here. Gonna bring it up again. There you go. And thank you, Emmy. I sure appreciate you being here today. I appreciate everybody being here today. Thank you so much. And there's our contact information. Yeah, and happy to chat with anybody about what they're doing and see if there's a way that we can help you with your business. Yeah, I'm sure we can take Afterpay or whatever. I'm not sure what that is exactly, but it's, that's a payment processing thing. I'm sure we can figure things out. So oh. did you pop our information in there, David? I don't see it in yep. the chat box. Yeah, it's in there. Uh, okay, I don't see a new one in there at all. Oh, press just... enter. Oh, hold on. Yeah, yeah it's... Uh... There we go. Let's try that. that maybe one, did one person, not everybody. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Crystal had asked the question and it defaulted to her. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. Now it's grab here. grab the information here again because you got my website wrong. There, copy. Paste. Oh yes, there we go. Perfect. There it goes. My website. 
So, uh, and if you want to book a, a Zoom call with me, your uh, Calendly in there, Dave? Yep. You didn't do it. There you go. It's perfect. Great. Okay. So thank you all for being here today. Once again, call us, text us, message us. We'll be happy to answer your, 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 your calls and uh, answer your emails. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day, all right?